You don't need me to tell you that it seems like we are up to our butt cheeks in an emulation revolution. And not that I'm complaining, but if you want to get into this a retro emulation scene, it's easier than it's ever been before. It's bigger than it's ever been before. But sometimes, especially if you're new to this, you can find things to be a little bit maybe confusing or daunting or just flat out overwhelming. Maybe you've even been part of the scene for a little while and there's still some things that you're kind of cloudy about or not too sure on. So I decided I'm going to make a series of emulation tutorial videos that will cover not just the PS3, but various systems and platforms because at the heart of this emulation revolution, we have the RetroArch GUI fueled by the Libertro emulation course, which covers a lot of different platforms and systems. And as I go through all of these emulation tutorial videos, including this one, they will be geared towards the casual gamer or the casual end user that is using RetroArch. And with that in mind, these first few videos in the series, again, including this one, will be focused on getting you prepared by giving you tips, hints, advice, and general information on setting up not only your ROMs, and we'll be talking about the various and different types of ROMs and ROM sets and all that, but help with setting up your database, your bios, your cheat files, your box arts, your snapshots, and other things that in the end will hopefully help you get all these files nice and organized. Because thanks to the architecture of RetroArch, once you set up all these files just one time, you can literally copy and paste them, not just from one system to the next to the next, but across all different platforms that RetroArch runs on with ease. Hopefully this will make your life dealing with all this stuff just a little bit smoother and easier. So let's go ahead and kick that intro so we can get started. Hey guys, welcome to the video. And I know it's been a little while, but man, this holiday season, I got so busy way more than what I was expecting. I know in the last video, I said I was going to make these more often. Uh, and then I got like triple busy than I did last year. I mean, it was ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, my hobbies and the stuff I wanted to do in my spare time that all got pushed back. So I'm going to go ahead and try and catch up now with some of it. Anyway, like I said in the intro video, this is going to be the first of a few videos that will focus on getting prepared for the future videos I'm doing on emulation. So, you know, I figured why not go ahead and make a playlist of RetroArch tutorials on this channel. That way, you know, this could be kind of like a little hub for people who are getting into the, uh, you know, whole emulation scene or RetroArch scene or whatever, maybe for the first time or are seeking some clarity about some stuff without a shitload of complexity. Because when it comes to all this emulation stuff that's out there, there is a lot to consume. So the ultimate goal here, and not just of these preparation videos, but of the emulation videos that follow, is to give you just enough information, insight, guidelines, etc. And maybe just a little bit more than that without going overboard. So that way your experience with RetroArch regardless of what platform that you're using it on is a more enjoyable one. For example, in these first couple of videos, I'm going to be talking about ROMs. And if you don't know, you're going to find out that some of these ROM sets contain a bunch of extra fluff and BS that you may not need. I mean, do you really need 37 different versions of Street Fighter 2 Turbo? Probably not. So in that video that I'm going to make, I'm going to be showing you how I trim the fat and I get rid of all that extra fluff to make my ROM sets leaner and more efficient because that's a topic that actually comes up often in the community. So this is what I mean about giving you what you need and maybe just a little bit extra to enhance your experience with RetroArch and just emulation in general. So before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things we need to get out of the way first and foremost, obviously, 
emulation is not a 100% science. It hasn't been, and it probably won't be even if we live like four or five more lifetimes. So just keep that in mind. The next thing is that a lot of this stuff is not definitive, and there may be other ways to approach these things uh, that we're you know gonna be covering and talking about. Some of it is just suggestive, so you can approach it however you like and in the manner that works best for you. And lastly, this video here is not heavy on like hands-on tutorial stuff with visuals. If you just wanna put me on speaker or on headphones or whatever while you go and do something else, that's fine. If there's anything that's important or you know someplace I go to or some site or whatever, I'll just put the links down in the description. Okay, so we're going to pretty much kick everything off here right from the beginning, and we're going to start with console ROMs or console ROM sets. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be covering the arcade ROMs and the ROM sets, uh, you know, for the arcade emulators, but for now, we're going to focus on the consoles. And when I say console, of course, I don't mean just the consoles, I also mean the retro handhelds as well. So we're talking about, you know, your Sega Genesis, your NES system, SNES, Sega Master System, your Ataris, your various Game Boy handhelds, Sega Game Gear, and so on. And before we go any further, even though we're gonna be, you know, focused and talking about ROMs in this video, I cannot tell you or link to where to get ROMs from. If I do, of course, then I run the risk of getting the channel shut down. And with over 8,000 subscribers, there is no way I'm going to risk that. You know, if maybe we just had a couple of hundred or a few hundred, eh, maybe it wouldn't bother me so much. But I don't think it's fair to that many people who are subscribed and to pay attention to the channel. So I'm not going to do it. But if you pay close attention, uh, I will be pointing you in the general right direction. Anyway, so when it comes to ROM sets, even with consoles, there are different ones out there. There's the good set ROM sets, the hyperspin ROM sets, no intro ROM sets, and some others. The most popular ones and the ones that are best to use with RetroArch if you want to get the most benefits and the way RetroArch was pretty much designed to be used for are hands down the no intro ROM sets. That's what you want. So when you know, you're know you looking online for, let's say, your Sega Genesis ROM sets, you want to look for no intro Sega Genesis ROM sets. If you're looking for you know SNES, then no intro SNES ROM sets or no intro Super Nintendo ROM sets. That's what you want to find. And they're out there, they're everywhere. Of course, not every console or handheld will have a no intro ROM set. I think Atari doesn't have them, but most do, especially the popular systems. Um, but even if they don't say that there are no intro, there's a chance that they will be even by default. And if you're thinking you're missing out on something because you're getting the no intro ROM set over the good set or the hyperspin or whatever, that's just the style of the ROM set. That's it's just the way that they were put together in a way that they were named. You're not missing out on, you know, any performance or any graphics. You're not going to be missing out on games or anything like that. Trust me. Oh, and before I forget, we can we can throw into this mix of console and handheld no intro ROMs Neo Geo as well. Since Neo Geo doesn't have its like own standalone emulator, people, you know, usually forget that it was a console and they just associated with arcade, but it did have its own console. So you can look for no intro Neo Geo ROM sets as well. And I also want to clarify before we move on, we're focusing on console and handheld ROM sets. We're using the term no intro for those types of ROM sets, not to be confused with the arcade ROM sets, which use different terminology, such as merged, split, and non-merged. We'll get to that when we cover the arcade ROMs and ROM sets in the next video. Oh, and one more thing, when it comes to console and handheld ROM sets, don't be looking for like numbered ROM sets because that's an arcade ROM set type thing. With like MAME and FB Alpha, those get updated frequently and so they have numbers attached to those ROM sets. That is not the case 
with the console ROM sets. If you find a console ROM set that's, you know, a no intro one that's like two years old, chances are it's the exact same thing as one from like 10 or 12 years ago. Um, so yeah, the numbers thing doesn't pertain to the console ROM sets, just the arcade ones. Okay, so on here at my RetroArch on my PC, and a couple of other perks and benefits for using the no intro ROM sets is that when RetroArch was made, they made it with the idea that you would be using no intro ROM sets. And well, that's what they wanted you to use because a lot of the supporting files here and some of the cool features are designed for you uh, with the idea that you will be using these no intro ROM sets and they're designed to make things just a lot easier. So for example, the thumbnails, which are like your box arts and your screenshots and stuff like that, you can come into the program itself and you can just download them for you know any particular uh, system or emulator, especially the ones that you've downloaded the no intro ROM sets for. Same thing with the cheat files, and you can either download them from the program itself, or you can go to the site and just download the cheat files and the uh, thumbnails and stuff from there, and then just transfer it over. And we will be talking in detail more about cheat files and box arts and things like that and, and themes and all that in future videos. But anyway, um, when you get this from RetroArch, then everything just kind of syncs up really well together and it just works. So for example, I'm here on my FB Alpha Arcade games, uh, which primarily I really only use for my Neo Geo ROMs. And the way RetroArch works is that it displays the actual name of the game. So you can see here that this game is called 2020 Super Baseball Set 1. However, the name of the ROM is different. The name of the actual ROM is 2020BB.zip. So this is important because in order for these files to work, in order for the thumbnails, like the box art to show, for the screenshots to show, for your cheat files to work and things like that, all of those files have to be named the way the game is named in the no intro ROM set not the name of the ROM. So if this box art was called 2020BB, it wouldn't show. If this had a cheat file and the cheat file was called 2020BB, it wouldn't work. These files have to be called 2020 Super Baseball Set 1 exactly the way it is there. And then they will display properly, the cheat files will work properly and all that good stuff. So RetroArch has kind of done all of that for you but in order for the names to sync up with the image files and the cheat files and everything, you have to make sure you use those no intro ROM sets for your consoles and your handhelds. Again, we'll be talking more about that in detail later on. But this is, you know, a, a pretty big perk for those who want to, you know, make their retro arch look nice by displaying these different thumbnails. And if you want to use cheat files and things like that. Yeah, this is all set up for, you know, you to use and be really easy as long as you get those no intro ROM sets. All right, so that's pretty much it for now, guys. Um, in the next video, we will be covering the arcade ROM sets and going over all that terminology and stuff. And then in the one after that, we will be focusing on bios and cleaning up some of these ROM sets from all that extra fluff and stuff that you may not need. And down in the description, I'm going to put some of the videos I'm going to be working on in this big emulation series. Um, you know, we're going to show you how to set up retro arch, not just in PS3, but across other platforms, um, how to use some of the key features here, even how to make your own themes like I have set here and your own icons, as well as even setting up things like uh, your own columns. Like I have a set of Super Mario World hacks in its, you know, in their own folder, and I didn't want it to get mixed in with my regular Super Nintendo games that are here. So I set it up so that way they have their own column. It even has its own name here and everything works properly. And so all of that and a lot more stuff. Anyway, guys, thanks 
as always for watching. Don't forget a thumbs up. I hope you had a great Christmas and even a better New Year. Stay safe and I will see you on the next one.